I don't know if you've been on the internet, but sometimes you see stuff that's kind of cool. So here's a post on Instagram that I saw. Let me just play part of this video. So, but in short, pull up bar, guy, another stick that's just in contact with the bar. And then some other people try to do it too, and they all fail. Ha ha. I mean, not ha ha. It looks like it's pretty tough. Doing a pull up's hard enough as it is. Okay, so how do we calculate uh, how hard this would be? Uh, the first thing that we want to think about is let's just think about that stick. Okay, that stick, I'm going to draw a picture. So here's my stick, like this. There's the stick. And then the person's hanging on it, so let's just draw that person. Here's the person. Uh, and then, yeah, I know I have long hands like that. Now, the number one thing that we need to think about is how do you prevent that stick from not falling over? So I want to think about uh, this system of the stick plus the person. So if that's the case, I can draw my force diagram like this. Here's my stick, and then here's my system. Let's just draw it like it actually is. And so I have the normal force of the person pushing, uh, the stick pushing up on the system, and then I have, yes, the center of mass of the system. So when we deal with rotate, uh, rigid objects, it doesn't just matter what forces are acting on the object, but where those forces are acting too. You know, my favorite example is this. if you take a stick like this and I push up and down an equal amount, but at different locations, it's going to rotate. So the center of mass may stay stationary and have an acceleration of zero, but it will rotate. Okay, so in order to be in equilibrium, we need two conditions. So those two conditions are uh, the net force has to be equal to zero, F net, the vector, the zero vector, and the net torque about some point O has to be zero. Now, I'm using this special version of torque, which is a scalar. This is the way most algebra-based textbooks do it. They say torque is a scalar value, and you can either be clockwise or counterclockwise. And that works fine in two dimensions. Um, it's not true, but it's fine, right? So that way we don't have to do cross products. And I'm going to stick with that. So this is the x and the y net force has to be zero, and the net torque about any point has to be zero. If the net torque is not zero, the object will change its rotational motion, OK? So right here, let's pick this as my point O. And I can calculate the torque on an object as R, F, sine theta. So just as a review, here is my stick, any stick, and I push on it with the force F, like that direction. R is a vector from the point O to the location where the force is applied. And then theta is the angle between those. So right here, as I increase theta to 90 degrees, I get more torque. If I put torque uh, force at a zero degree angle with respect to R, then you get zero torque. You can't pull on the door away from the hinge and get it to open. Uh, you want to pull perpendicular to the door. Also, as you increase R, you increase the torque. Now, the convention we have here is that uh, plus, plus torque would be counterclockwise, minus torque is clockwise. So if this would, by itself, would make it rotate this direction, that's clockwise, then we're going to call that negative. If it made it rotate this way, it's positive. And that comes from the right-hand rule, right? So if you put your fingers in the direction that it would make it all by itself rotate, your thumb points in the direction, and this direction is positive z, that's negative z. I know that's a lot. Okay, so back to this. If I pick that as my point, then I have two forces that exert torque. These two could be equal and opposite forces, but uh, they have to have a total torque of zero. Right here, the net torque would be the torque due to the normal force, which is going to be the normal force times our normal force uh, times sine of theta, normal force, plus mgrg sine theta. So, but right here, the force is applied at the point. So R here is zero. And this, if you want to do it correctly, this would be your R for the gravity, but R and mg are in the same direction, so that's zero. So I get zero net torque. So with zero net torque, it doesn't rotate. 
So you have to have the center of mass underneath the, the contact point. And so if you look at the, at the picture, the guy's sticking his legs out underneath the bar, and you have to do that. Otherwise, you'll just tip over. There's nothing you can do, right, if you don't have your center of mass. It doesn't matter how strong you are. If your center of mass is over here, it's going to exert a torque, and you're going to rotate, and then you're going to fall, and then you'll look silly. But don't record that one and post that one on Instagram. Post the one where you get it right. That's how you do it. Okay. Just a quick note. If you put... If I have, this is actually stable equilibrium because let's just say that here is my center of mass and so it's, it's not completely under there. Okay? If that's the case, what direction would the torque on that be? Well, this force would want to make it rotate this way, right? So that's a negative, that's a negative torque. But if that's the case, then this mass will move more to where R is less than is uh, theta is closer to zero. So it's going to move it back to equilibrium. If you're up here, then that torque would also make it have a negative, uh, that would be a negative torque, but that would move it further away from the equilibrium position. So if you were on top of the bar, whoa boy, that would be hard. I'd like to see that. That'd actually be pretty cool. Okay. So that's the first part of the trick is make sure your center of mass is below the bar. Okay, now let's think about these forces on the bar. I want to just draw the bar and draw all the, the bar is in equilibrium, the stick is in equilibrium. So here's my stick. And suppose I have a force right there and that's, I'll call that, uh, let's call it the normal force because it technically, oops, that's too high. Let's call that the normal force. There's my stick, and the normal force is right there. And then uh, your first approximation would be like, well, he's pulling down on the stick, so I have a downward force. I'll call that F1. And then we have another downward force, F2. Okay. So you could say uh, that the net force has to be zero, and we will. But let's first talk about the torque. So I need to pick a point to calculate the torque the net torque about the point O. Here we can make a choice. If I choose a point that, that gives me a zero torque for one of the forces, that'll make things easier. Okay. So I'm going to pick right here as my torque point O. If I do that, I'm going to get three torques, but the torque due to this bar is zero because it's at the point of contact. R is zero for that one, so that's a zero torque. Let's call this distance R1, and let's call that R2. So now I'm going to get a negative torque from this one, right, because it wants to make it go clockwise. So minus R1 F1, and then a, a to negative torque for that, minus R2 F2 equals zero. And here we have our first problem, because there's no way I can have two negative numbers add up to zero. One of them has to be positive. Well, how can I make this positive? I either have to move it to the other side of the bar, which I can't do, or I have to change the direction um, of one of them. I can't change the direction of both of them. Obviously, I have to pull down on the bar, right? Okay. So let's change the direction of this one. And here's another trick. That hand that's farthest from the bar is actually pushing up on the bar. Now we can do our Newton's second law. Uh, so I'm going to write down, uh, first of all, Newton's second law for the person. So he's, he's like this, and that's uh, F1 is down, F2 is up. That's F2. And then I have the gravitational force, Mg. And that's the weight of the person. So this gives me an expression for F1 and F2. So I know that F1 minus F2 minus Mg equals zero because the person's in equilibrium. And then the force F1 on the bar would be in the equal and opposite direction. Right? These two forces are Newton's third, they're all pairs. He's pulling down on the bar with F1, so the bar pulls up on him with F1. I don't really care about the person, I care about the bar, but I need the magnitudes of those forces. So I know that expression is true. 
Now we can go over here to the stick and write the net force F net in the Y direction. It's going to be N minus F1 plus F2 equals zero. So I don't know N. I don't know anything. I, I have I don't know F1, I don't know F2, I don't know N. So I actually already have three variables I don't know and I only have two equations. Well, we get another equation by writing down the net torque equation. So I'll put it right here, torque net about the point O. It's gonna be, uh, I already wrote it up there. Uh, it's gonna be zero and then I have minus R1F1 minus plus R2F2 equals zero from this R1, F1 is R2, F2. Okay, one equation, two equation, three equation. Let's find an expression for F1. I want to solve for F1. So up here, I'm going to solve this for F2. So this gives me F2 equals F1 minus mg. Is that right? F2 moves F1 minus mg. Yeah, that's right. Now I can plug it in down here and I get N minus F1 plus F1 minus MG equals zero. All I do is substitute that F2 in here. I don't know N. Okay, so now I can solve, I have, uh, I guess I'm gonna have to solve for N first. Um, so let's get no, I should solve this for, it only appears in the equation once. Let's just skip that equation. Let's just use this equation, that equation. Let's do that. You may think I plan these things out, but I don't. So up here, I'm going to use this equation along with this one. Let's solve this one for F2. So F2 equals R1 F1 over R2. And now I can substitute that in up here, and I get F1 minus R1 F1 over R2 minus MG equals zero. I can solve this. I'm going to add MG to both sides and factor out the F1. I'm getting a little messy up here. So I have F1 times 1 minus R1 over R2 equals MG. And notice that the units do work out force, unitless force, so that's good. So then if I solve that for F1, F1 equals mg over one minus R1 over R2. And that's the force that you have to pull with the left hand, okay? And you'll notice that, uh, what, how, how do I make that, if R1 and R2 were the same? If, no, how about this? If R1 is zero, then F1 would be mg. That's just hanging on the bar with one hand, right? Because your center mass is right below that. As I increase the value of R1, R2 can't be zero, right? Because then this whole thing would be infinite. Um, but then I have to increase the value of R2. And then let's go ahead and count. We're going to put in some values here. Um, so let's go ahead and get an expression for F2. So F2 right here. Um, I had F1. I had F2. I have, <laughs> I'm going back over here. F1 minus F2 minus MG equals zero. That's what I want. So F2 is going to be F1 minus mg. And so F1 is going to be greater than mg because it's going to be a number uh, less than 1. So F2 is going to have to be some non-zero number 2. Okay. Let's just go ahead and put in some values. Let's make some estimates and let's just calculate both of these things. So I'm going to say uh, m is 80 kilograms. Uh, R1 is... Mm, let's say two centimeters, 0 0.02, and then uh, R2 is 0 0.5, let's say five. Okay, 
So I'm going to calculate F1 up here. So it's going to be 80 times 9.8 over 1 minus R1, which is 0.02, divided by 0.5. So let's put that in our calculator. Calculator time. Okay, 80. I can't see. 80. Enter. 9.8 times. 1. Enter. 0 0.02. Enter. 0 0.5. Divided by. Minus. Divided by. And I get F1 is uh, 816 newtons. And then F2 would be uh, 816 minus 80 times 9.8. So 80 enter 9.8 times minus, and I get 32. So he's going to pull down with 816 newtons, and he's going to push up with 32 newtons. So there's two things here, right? The more you push up with the other hand, the more you have to pull down with that one. So you don't want to have that very large. Um, the other thing is this is greater than your weight. So this is harder than just uh, doing a one-handed pull-up, which I can't do, OK? Because uh, you have that extra force pushing down on you. So there you go. Key number one, let's go over the keys if you want to do this. Key number one, center mass underneath the pivot point. Key number two, R1 as small as possible. Key number three, R2 as small as possible. So just as a bonus here, I actually want to show you this because uh, I did make one out of Lego. So here's my two arms and there's my legs. And then if I want to balance it, let's see if I pull this out a little bit. I want to show you one thing though. Oops, I dropped it. So this uh, Lego piece right here is going to be pulling up on the rest, but that one actually pushes down. You could replace this. Let's see if it'll work. Let's see if I move this down like that. So now it's sitting on top of that one. You see? It's not pulling up. Oh, and I broke it. I broke his arms. OK. It's not perfect, but there you go. The end. OK. Physics problem for you. I'll put a link to that uh, Instagram post down below. I hope you enjoyed that. Talk to you later.